Hi there, welcome to Joyce on YouTube. Don't forget to join us on the Joyce Meyer app and at JoyceMeyer.org for more of what you're about to see and lots of great content to help you in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. Peace with God, peace with yourself, peace with your fellow man. This is actually a three-part series if I preach it properly, but you're going to get this download here in five minutes. <laughs> if you're going to have peace with God, you've got to know that God loves you. You have to know God's character so you can know what to expect from Him. You know that when you sin, He's ready to forgive. You know that He's full of mercy. You know that you can trust God. You can be open with God. You can talk to God about anything. There's absolutely nothing that you need to try to hide from God because he knows everything anyway. So if you're gonna have peace with God, don't try to keep secrets from him. There is no such thing as keeping a secret from God. How silly is that to think we're not gonna tell God something? Peace with yourself. This is another four-part series. Why don't you once and for all, if you need to accept yourself tonight, quit having a war with yourself. You don't have any peace if you're constantly picking on yourself, taking a continual inventory of everything that's wrong with you, comparing yourself with other people. I don't look like this, and I don't look like that, and I wish I had their figure, and I wish I had your hair, and I wish I had your gift, and I wish I could sing like that. <laughs> Not. We are what we are. Let's take what we are, which is God's will. He doesn't make any junk. He doesn't make any mistakes. And let's do the best that we can with it and stop competing with other people and wanting a life that's not the life we have. We can be sour and sad the rest of our life because we're not like somebody else, but that's never going to make us like somebody else. Be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> now, let me just tell you, if you don't like yourself, you're in for a rough go. Because everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> Have peace with God. Have peace with yourself. And then have peace with people. Wow. Let me give you a, a, just a few tips on how to have peace with people. Just a handful. Be stingy with your criticism. <laughs> I mean, just be as stingy as you can be with criticism. Mind your own business. Give your opinion very sparingly. <laughs> Even when people ask for your opinion, usually they just want you to agree with them. <laughs> Not suggesting you be dishonest, but you gotta keep in mind that I'm saying even if you only gave your opinion when people ask for it, even half the time they ask for it, they don't really want it. So there's really no point in giving people our opinion when they've not asked for it because it's never going to hit them the right way. Don't try to control people. They don't like it. Everybody's not like you. Give them some space. Now, now we're going to talk about the main thing I want to talk about tonight. The other thing that steals our peace is the storms of life. There's big storms, little storms, long storms, short storms, <laughs> storms that aren't in the forecast. And we need to learn how to live ready. Now, we looked at 1 Peter 3, 11, but let's look at Psalm 34, 14. What is our job during a storm? It's not to fix the storm. It's not to make the storm go away. It's to actually hold on to our peace. If you want to become a powerful person, you learn how to hold your peace in the storm, and when you can do that, the devil does not know what to do with you. Yeah. Psalm 34, 14. 
You say, well, it's just too hard. I just get too upset. Well, see, that's our first mistake, saying that we can't do what God tells us to do. Depart from evil and do good. Seek, inquire for, and crave peace. Pursue it and go after it. I wish that I could convey to you what this scripture in 1 Peter 3.11 meant to my life when I realized, now listen to me, that I could no longer just stand around and wait for peace to fall on me. That I wasn't getting it by wishing for it. I wasn't even getting it by praying for it. Because to be honest, a lot of times we pray for things we've already got. And so we're praying prayers that are just useless because they're not prayers that God can answer. To say, give me peace is not the right way to pray. Here's the way to pray. God, help me walk in the peace that you've already given me that's inside of me. I have peace. And the more you believe that you have peace, the more you'll be willing to access that peace and walk in it when you need it. Peace protects you. Peace gives you power. Peace gives you authority over the devil. When you hold your peace, it is the most powerful position that you can have. But we get rattled and upset, we are doing exactly what the devil wants us to do. Did you hear me? When we get rattled and upset and start saying all kinds of... Come on, you know, when you get upset, the mouth goes to work. How many of you think that it's possible that you could learn to be peaceful in the storm? Some of you are just like, I don't know. You don't know me. Well, I know me. You know, I used to have so many tantrums. Oh, my gosh. I was just like a pressure cooker waiting to blow. My mother cooked in a pressure cooker a lot when I was a kid. And if you've ever seen one, you know, when it builds up steam inside, then that little thing on top goes. <laughs> it's threatening just looking at it. <laughs> Spurting out steam every once in a while. And I remember her saying all the time, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Whatever you do, don't take the lid off. Don't touch it. And I was kind of like that. It was like, I was just like, <laughs> just waiting for somebody to push me the wrong way. <laughs> but you know why I was like that? It was because of all the stuff going on inside me. I wasn't protecting the kingdom that is within me. I didn't know who I was in Christ. I didn't have peace with God. I didn't believe God loved me. I didn't even believe he liked me, let alone believe that God was actually pleased with me. I was insecure. I was fearful all the wrong things, I didn't have to be, but why was, I, why was I not getting victory over those things? Because I was pursuing kingdom benefits. I wanted my ministry to grow. I wanted my husband to change. I wanted my kids to change. I wanted to be in this certain social group at church. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I'm just telling you the truth. I wasn't chasing after the right thing. And if you chase the wrong thing, you're never gonna end up with the right thing. Amen? That's a keeper. If you chase the wrong thing, you'll never end up with the right thing. If you want peace, pursue it. If you want to walk in love, you got to study love. You got to put on love. You got to get up every day and you got to plan to go out of your house and love people. You got to be ready to give. You got to have stuff prepared to give. If you want to walk in love, you can because God will help us walk in love. He's called us to walk in love and I want to love people. I want to be peaceful, and I am determined that I'm going to enjoy my life. I mean everything about my life, not just the vacations, not just the paydays, everything about my life. How many of you are ready for some of that? But storms come. You never know exactly when they're going to come. John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Now, how many of you are seeing that next sentence coming up? Stop allowing yourselves 
to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Now let's be clear that we're not gonna do anything without the grace of God, nothing. Apart from you, we can do nothing. Our job is to believe and God's job is to do. So I believe that God can help me do everything that he's told me to do if I'm willing. And I can't be just a little bit willing, I've gotta be radically willing. It's amazing what I've seen happen in my life in this area of temperament. Just by focusing on something like I'm determined I'm not gonna live without peace. And it took me a good number of years. I had to really start backing into, well, okay, what is stealing my peace? I found out when I have to hurry that I lose my peace. So then I had to stop hurrying. I found out that if I worry about stuff all the time, that I'm not gonna keep my peace. So I had to dig in with God and pray and study the word of God enough to get to the point that I realized how useless worry is. Worry is like sitting in a rocking chair and rocking all day. It keeps you busy, but it gets you nowhere. You don't make any progress. It's useless. What is it that steals your peace? You say, well, my kids steal my peace. Well, you got them, they're yours. They're gonna be there until they're grown and gone. Sorry, that's, you wanted them. These kids are driving me crazy. Well, yeah, kids can be challenging. There's no doubt about it. You got three or four teenagers in the house. You, you need every book I got, trust me. <laughs> but here's the thing. You weren't any different when you were their age. except those few of you that were angelic while you were growing up. I, I mean, how many of you did some double dumb stuff when you were a kid? I mean, I used to do stupid stuff like hold my breath till I'd pass out. Play chicken with cars out in the street. Me and my friends would lay down in the street and see how close the car could get to us before we'd roll out of the way. Last wonder, yeah, people are going. <laughs> well, you know, I had a lot of guts way back then. I just wasn't too smart about it. I did stupid stuff, dumb stuff. You're all shaking your head at me. What did you do? I invite you to join me in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org. Today, for more on this topic and other teachings, I believe God will use these to help you in your everyday life. I'll look forward to seeing you there.